This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. So, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to calculate the confidence interval and margin of error using a formula. In the first section, we're going to look at that formula, get acquainted with it, and we're going to see how it works in the following two sections by looking at some examples. Okay, so I just want to inform you that if you go to Math Guide and you click on our Lessons section, you could uh, also take a look at our Statistics section and you could see that we do have a lot of content on that. Uh, on this uh, area of mathematics, you can see we've got Lessons, those are the L's, the Q's are Interactive Quizzes, and we've got a growing list of videos. Uh, it's the interactive quizzes at this moment uh, that we have a lot of. Um, as a matter of fact, um, let me get rid of this. If um, you look at the comment section of this video, you're going to see um, a link to our lesson. And uh, there's a lot of information on it, two different formulas there, and uh, explicit directions as to how to use it. And uh, you also will have access to the interactive quiz and it's going to throw a random problem at you and you'll have a chance to plug in some numbers uh, after you try doing the problem and it'll see if you understand it. Okay, let's jump into the examples. Okay, as you can see, I posted a, uh, the, uh, the graphic there of the formula that we need to use for calculating margin of error. That's what the ME stands for. Now, first of all, you'll see in the formula a 1.96. That 1.96 relates to specifically a 95% confidence interval. And that number is going to change depending on what your confidence interval is. Now, um, I'm not going to get into the details about how to use a Z interval, um, part of the bell curve, to get that. Uh, that's a different topic for someone who understands a little bit more about statistics farther along the road. Okay, so this is just the formula we're going to use every time we want to calculate a 95% confidence interval. Okay, what does that little p hat mean? The p hat represents the proportion that you're given in a problem. Like let's say you have a survey and you find out 20% of the people, they, they give you a 20% statistic. Well, you're going to put in 0.2, the percentage, into the formula. If there's 80%, uh, you're going to put a 0.8. That's what the p stands for. If you had 1,200 people participating in the survey, that's what N stands for, the number of people who participated in a survey. Um, if you had 500 people, N is 500. So the best way to see how to use this formula is to see it in action when we're actually going through a problem. So let's jump into our problems. All right, so here's our first example. You can see it says a survey was conducted and the results showed 53% of registered voters support this candidate. I'm just calling the candidate Mr. Demos. Calculate a 95% confidence interval for 850 people who participated in the survey. Okay, now if you remember, we had this formula that gave us the margin of error. Usually I say MOE, but anyway, many formulas are abbreviated ME for margin of error. Okay, so this is what the formula looks like for a 95% confidence interval. Now you'll see the percentage we're given. I mean, disregard the 95%. We already know that's the percentage for our confidence interval. The other percent is a 53%. So when you throw it into the formula, you're going to put 0.53. And in parentheses, you're going to put 1 minus 0.53. I'm just going to make it easier. I know what 1 minus 0 0.53 is, is 0.47. Okay, so I'm just cleaning up a little bit. There's my 1 minus 0 0.53. Okay, and underneath it says, uh, how many people? Well, we got 850 people. And I'm literally not going to do any more work by hand. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so I'm plugging this into the calculator and exactly how it is. And I would use like, let's say a TI Inspire so I could plug it in exactly how it is what, with the what you see is what you get system, right? So plug that in. Now I'm looking at a cheat sheet because I already did this. 
and out comes this number, 0336. Uh, okay, what does this number mean? Remember, we're, we're talking about percents. And just like when I plugged in uh, 0.53, I have to move the decimal two places to the right to get it back to a percent. So this means 3.36%. Uh, okay, what now? That's the margin of error. Now, if you remember anything about how to build your confidence inter interval from the margin of error, you first, you're going to take the 53% or just the 53 minus 3.36. That's going to get the low end of your margin of error. I did that already and I'm getting 49.64. All right, so that's the low end of the percent. Okay, and then what's the high end? You're gonna take the 53 plus the 3.36 and you get, well, I'm looking at the paper as if I can't do this in my head, right? 56.36%. Now, a lot of people ask, what does this confidence interval mean? Now, you got to be careful here. Um, it means exactly this, that if you were going to conduct the exact same survey and you were to ask 850 random people, um, random registered voters in this problem, it means that the mean of the data you would collect has a 95% chance of being in this range of values. Okay, so that's what this means, and it's kind of a mouthful, but that's what the confidence interval means. Uh, why is it like this? Is because when you do a survey, and since we're not asking all people, we're only asking a, uh, um, a sample of our survey, that there's inherent uh, errors involved. Okay, and you got to take that into account. And every time you look at a survey, you should take into this into account You've got to look at the margin of error because that number or those numbers you're given in surveys are not 100% accurate. Okay, that's a long answer to a, a simple question in a simple formula. So let's try one more example. So here's our second example. So a researcher wanted to know how are kids washing their hands? Are they doing it properly or not? Well, 1,200 high school males were participated in this survey and after the researcher spoke with these students um, researcher found out that 30 percent of them washed their hands properly okay um, so how do we calculate a 95 percent confidence interval with this data you pull out the formula margin of error 1.96 and again I'm just throwing this all into the formula okay so I know that the uh, percentage there is point oops let's do that point 30 and in parentheses I'm supposed to put a 1 minus point 30 1 minus point 30 is point 70 how many people participated well 12 uh, okay now I threw this into the formula already or I should say threw the formula into the these numbers into the formula in my calculator and um, this is what comes out of the calculator. 0 0.0259, there we go. Okay, what does this mean? It means 2.59%. All right, now what we're gonna do is calculate the margin of, or sorry, the confidence interval. So we're gonna take 30 minus 2.59, and that is 27. Point one and we're going to take 30 plus 2.59 and I'm getting 32.59 okay so and oh yeah I should have percents on those okay what does this mean okay it means if a researcher were to conduct this exact same um, survey again with 1200 random male high school students, uh, it means there is a 95% chance that the mean is going to be somewhere between these two values. Okay, um, and that's what I would write down on a test. 
Okay, exactly what I just said there. Um, why is it? Because again, there's inherent errors that are involved when you don't ask all students. You're, you're just taking a sample of the students, and that's why there's this variance. Well, I'm not going to use the word variance, sorry. That's why there's this these values um, that it could swing between because of the inherent errors involved in the problem. Okay, so there you go, our two problems are done. So uh, go back to mathguide.com, make sure uh, you check out our interactive uh, quizzes, our lessons, and our instructional videos. Also, before I forget, please make sure that you like this video and please subscribe to the page. Just if you could do one of those things, I would really appreciate it. And uh, have a great one. See you next time.